What's up traders, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at one of the most helpful tricks that you can utilize to find good entries on any pair. We're going to be looking at the overnight session box. A lot of traders don't know that this session exists. So we have three types of setups. The first one is the classic light stop run below the box and using the candle that traded below as an order block to buy. The second setup is the actual rate of the box and waiting for the market structure shift and using the fair value gap for your entry. The last one is the easiest one to see. It's the break above the box and waiting for price to come back to the 50% level of the box. So for your sales setups, it's just a mirror of everything. So let's look at a couple of practical examples. So we're in the five minute time frame on NASDAQ. It works on the one minute too, by the way. So first and foremost, you have to plot the overnight session box on your chart. So this exists between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m. New York time. So you have to group the candles that exist between that period of time every day, which will form your box. So now you must wait for one of the setups to form. So on this day, we had setup number one, which is the one with the order block. If you are trading without buyers, you have to always take your profits at the opposite side of the box. If you are trading with buyers, you have to hold your trades for the entire range. Let's look at what happened the next day. Same setup, different direction. So we have our box right here. So we have traded slightly above the box, which is setup number one. So this is our potential order block, plus our fair value gap. So your entry is going to be at the order block, and your target at the opposite side of the box. Keep in mind. I didn't say anything about bias. So let's see what happened the next day. This day is very interesting. On this day, we have setup number two. Same process every day. We have our time and our overnight session box between the time. So we have traded below the box with a potential order block. The reason why I say potential is because we haven't traded above that order block. So we had a deeper stop band with two favorite gaps. You must always take the first fair value gap and accommodate them both with your stop loss. We had a very small feeling, but size doesn't matter. You go to your TP, walk away, see you tomorrow. So now we're on the opposite side of the box. We still have the same setup, which is setup number two. We are just following the rules here with no bias. So we are already above the box. So we are looking for setup number two. We have a stop hand. Or a fake breakout because the candle did not close below the structure so let's assume that that wasn't part of your rules for a structure break or a shift which means that you would have used this fairly gap to take a sales setup which means that you would have been stopped out you cried about it nope you only cry when you didn't follow the rules so we have another shift that is clear this time with a close below the structure you are always required to take the first fair gap if you have home, but your stop loss is supposed to accommodate both of them. So there's your target and you walk away. So let me show you why it's important to look at the other positive correlated pair when you are trying to take entries. This is the same price action. Now we have S&P 500 on the left. From a buying perspective, we have a clear fair gap on S&P 500. This should have been an indicator to take a buy on NASDAQ, even if NASDAQ didn't revisit the fair value gap at all. So refer to this video if you don't understand the trick. I want you to look at this fail setup that occurred right here and why it's so easy to see that this was just a stop and We have talked about divergence so many times on the previous videos. So you can see how we had a small consolidation right here, which has to build liquidity before we had divergence. So the divergence was showing us that it was still bullish. So it would have been an unnecessary loss if you took a sell right there because the structure is not clear on the left. So let's continue. I'm going to leave the rest for you to test on your own because it never ends. It repeats every day. You can even check the price action that took place on Monday on Wednesday. So let's look at the final setup. This is the only one that requires directional bias. With this one, you're going to use the 50% level of the box as your entry, which simply means that you have to cut the box in half 
and use the slice level as your entry. So you have to wait for price to trade outside of the box first and wait for price to come back to the 50% level for your entry towards the same direction of the break. So this is something different because this is not nice day. So we own Bitcoin. So we go through the same process every day. We must first plot our box. Because you are using setup number 3, you have to consider direction. So what would be your direction looking at this price action? I told you guys, if you are truly struggling with the higher time frame order flow for directional bias, just follow the previous day's direction. You have a better chance of being right instead of guessing. Did we break above the box? Nope. We went for internal liquidity instead. We broke below the box. So what's next? The 50% level of the box for your entry. So you can put a sell limit on that level or take a manual entry. And your stop goes above the box. So in this case, you can hold for the entire range because you're trading with buyers. So that's it for this video, guys. I will be explaining this strategy in detail on the next upcoming videos. If you want to know more about the things that you can apply to become accurate, stay in touch by subscribing. I really appreciate the likes and the positive comments from you guys. Until I catch you next time, that's for Daniel.